In this video, we're going to have a look at how to represent data with a bar graph and histogram. After data has been collected, organized and summarized, it can be represented using different graphs. The type of graph you'll use is determined by the type of data that you're working with and what you want to represent about that data. A bar graph is used when you want to represent discrete data meaning data that is counted. Such a bar graph always has spaces in between the different bars of the graph. Example 1. Use the given table and draw a bar graph to represent the total number of learners that participate in the respective sports. The table gives us the number of boys, number of girls and the total number of learners that participate in five different sports. The question says we need to focus on the total number of learners. On the grid or system of axes, the x-axis has already been named according to the different sports. We need to add a caption for the y-axis and that will be the number of learners. Next, we need to go and add a bar to indicate the number of learners participating in each sport. Looking at the table, you will see that 35 learners participated in hockey so our bar for hockey should go right up to 35 on the y-axis. Remember that there should be spaces between the bars, so don't fill the whole column with your bar. Next up is cricket, where we have 20 learners that participated. And then we move on to netball, and netball had 27 learners. For rugby, we had one more learner, totaling 28. And then for soccer, we had a total of 40 learners. And here we now have a complete bar graph indicating the number of learners that participated in the respective sports. From this graph, we can conclude that soccer is the most popular sport. But soccer is also played by boys and girls. So let's go one step further and make a double bar graph where we separate the boys and girls participation. Here I've already indicated the number of boys participating in the respective sports. And now I'm going to add the girls to that. So the blue bars represent the boys and the purple bars the girls. Now we can see that two sports were represented by boys and girls and that's hockey and soccer. For these two sports, the bars are right next to each other but there are still spaces in between the different sports. Focusing only on the blue bars, we can make the conclusion that rugby was the most popular for the boys, and for purple we can say that netball was most popular under the girls. Using our previous bar graph, we could say that for all the learners, soccer was the most popular and cricket was least popular. A histogram is used for continuous data or data that is measured and for that reason the data will be grouped and we will make use of different class intervals. The class intervals can be indicated in different ways. On the left we can see that the first class starts at 20 and ends at 30 so the interval is from 20 to 30. In our second example the class interval is specifically written down as 0 to 10. Because the class intervals follow on each other in a histogram, there will be no spaces between the bars. Example 2. The given table shows the number of litres of fuel that is put into cars at a specific station. Represent the data in a histogram. For a histogram, the x-axis or horizontal axis will always represent the class intervals and in this case, that is the number of liters. The y-axis will be the frequency, which in this case is the amount of people in that specific class interval. The first class interval had a frequency of zero, and for the second one, there were two people that filled with 10 to 20 liters. Next, we had three people filling with 20 to 30 liters of fuel, and after that, we had eight people filling with 30 to 40 liters. 
another eight people filled with between 40 and 50 litres. And finally, there were four people filling with 50 to 60 litres. And here we have a complete histogram. In the next video, we're going to focus on more graphs that we can use to represent data.